Starting off at number 10, we have Saint Tome and Principe with about 8 thousand visitors. The African island nation of Saint Tome and Principe remains one of the least visited countries in the world. The island's sugar-based economy gave way to coffee and cocoa in the 19th century. Together, the islands comprise the second smallest African country after Seychelles, and at 225 kilometers off the northwestern coast of Gabon, they are seldom visited because of their relative remoteness. Remoteness. Up at number nine, we have a country called Niue with just under 8,000 visitors. The tiny, very rocky island nation is situated in the middle of the South Pacific. At only 260 square kilometers large and with around 1,000 inhabitants, Niue is also one of the smallest countries in the world. Surrounded by protective reefs and presided over by a sunny tropical island, Niue has one very unique trait high levels of natural radioactivity in the soil. But don't worry, no negative effects have been reported. Making it in eighth place, we have Libya with about 6,250 visitors. Though the 17th largest nation in the world, Libya, has more than its fair share of problems. Civil war has plagued the nation and clashes are frequent throughout the country with attacks affecting even hotels hosting tourists. 90% of the land is also covered by extremely dry desert with harsh climates. In fact, it's only in the northern regions of the country, on the Mediterranean Sea, that they enjoy a milder climate. But those tourists that dare to brave the environmental and political conditions will be rewarded with amazing historical heritage and views. In seventh place, we have Marshall Islands with about 6,000 visitors. The Marshall Islands comprises 29 coral atolls with over 1,000 islands and islets just north of the equator. Situated about halfway between Hawaii and Australia, residents rely heavily on fishing. In fact, in 2011, the government actually reserved an area of nearly 2 million square kilometers as a shark sanctuary, establishing the largest one in the world. The country is especially friendly to Americans as the US dollar is the national currency. Now, interestingly, it was the site of the largest US nuclear weapons test in history, with fallout continuing to impact the nation. Though radioactivity isn't the nation's only worry, as it is considered the most endangered country in the world due to flooding and climate change. So if you're going to visit, you might want to do it soon. <laughs> Up at number six, we have Equatorial Guinea with 5,700 visitors. Divided into a mainland and five volcanic islands, the African nation of Equatorial Guinea is hugely unknown, mainly because of the political issues that have plagued the country for centuries. Despite the huge oil wealth, very little of the wealth has trickled down to the poverty-stricken people. However, Equatorial Guinea offers a rare opportunity to experience Spanish colonial history and beauty. Natural wonders are the biggest draw to the nation, with outstanding volcanic views, seaside sand stretches, and an unspoiled jungle environment. Animal lovers are in luck as the rainforest is home to numerous endangered primates, and the beaches host nesting sea turtles. All right, and halfway in our list today, we have South Sudan with 5,000 500 visitors. Having recently split from Sudan, South Sudan is one of the newest countries in the world. Because of a diverse population, including Muslims, Christians, and animists, and equally diverse geography, South Sudan has been afflicted by civil war for more than 40 years. Even with tumultuous politics and a potentially dangerous atmosphere, Sudanese hospitality remains second to none, and those who venture into this country often report it as one of their favorites. With a rich and ancient cultural history, South Sudan has delicious cuisine as well, including Turkish, Egyptian, and Ethiopian influences, as well as many interesting sites to visit. In fourth place, we have Kiribati with 4,000 visitors. Comprising of 33 islands, Kiribati is an extremely geographically isolated country with a total land area of 800 square kilometers spread over 3.5 million square kilometers 
waters of ocean. This is a prime destination for divers and bird watchers, especially on Christmas Island, as millions of birds head there each year. Interestingly, Kiribati is the only country in the world to fall into all four hemispheres, straddling the equator and extending into the eastern and western hemispheres. It was also the first country to see the dawn of the third millennium on the 1st of January 2000. And in third place we have Tuvalu with 2,000 visitors. The tiny nation of Tuvalu is spread across nine islands with a total area of just 26 square kilometers. The secluded islands lie north of Fiji, halfway between Hawaii and Australia. To get there you'll have to catch a propeller plane from Fiji Airways that flies only twice a week. Featuring a vast diversity of marine life, Tuvalu is the ultimate diving and snorkeling vacation. There are nine different coral atolls, numerous coral reefs, lagoons, and small islands to spend days or even weeks exploring. Once you're ready for the dry land experience, you can enjoy a distinct, friendly, and protected Polynesian culture with unique arts, crafts, music, dance, and stories. And at number two, second place, we have Somalia with about a thousand visitors. Numerous travel warnings are in effect for Somalia due to armed conflict. But before the civil wars began in the early 1990s, Somalia was extremely welcoming to tourists. The country is especially notable for its waterfalls, mountain ranges, and national parks. The wild areas are home to a vast number of interesting wildlife. This includes lions, cheetahs, spotted hyenas, leopards, onyx, and ostrich. Additionally, the country has the longest coastline of any of the African continent and possesses innumerable beaches. And in first place, the country with the least visitors is Nauru with less than 1,000 visitors. Plunked in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, this tiny island nation covers less than 21 square kilometers and is home to less than 10,000 inhabitants. Only one airline serves this country with an old Boeing 737, and tourist infrastructure like hotels and restaurants are very minimal. Freight deliveries are rare and employment is even scarcer. Healthcare is basic at best. In spite of its present economic gloom, the island still offers glimpses of its former glory with turbulent surf surrounding the coastline and seabirds swooping over the Green Island cliffs. For World War II buffs, there are also remnants of Japanese occupation scattered around the island. The enormous skeletal remains of mining infrastructure are also true Truly remarkable to see. We have the country of Guinea with a GDP per capita of 2,338 US dollars. Although very rich in natural resources, the country of Guinea faces issues such as poor management and lack of safe infrastructure. Getting important resources such as electricity and water are also a challenge in the country, which makes running a business very costly. These factors also make foreign investors worried about coming to Guinea. The country number nine is Eritrea with a GDP per capita of $2,102.95 US. Eritrea is a small country in Africa and it has seen some growth in its economy in recent years. However, it still ranks among the world's poorest country with an average person earning less than $1,500 US dollars a year. A large amount of the country's GDP is made up of remittance, which is money sent to residents from relatives that live in Australia other countries. Country number eight is Madagascar with a GDP per capita of $1,452.60 US. Madagascar is the fourth largest island in the world and the average person is 42% poorer today than he was 50 years ago. And this is according to the World Bank. Three quarters of the population of Madagascar are now estimated by the United Nations to live on less than $1.25 US per day. With the majority of the population dependent on agriculture for their survival, the country's economy is really exposed to weather-related disasters. Next on the list, we have Mozambique with a GDP per capita of $1,180.37 US. Mozambique is located on the southeast coast of Africa 
Africa, bordering Zimbabwe and Malawi as well as South Africa. Unfortunately, it too is struggling with crippling poverty. There's a lot of corruption and that is said to be a massive problem in the country which hinders the economic success of the residents. Much of the rural Mozambique lives on less than a dollar and 25 cents US per day. The country number six is Malawi with a GDP per capita of $1,163.30 US. In Malawi, well over 85% of the country's population live in rural area and is dependent on subsistence farming. The country's economy is fragile and very dependent on foreign aid. Back in the year 2000, however, the International Monetary Fund or the IMF stopped its aid payments to Malawi saying that widespread corruption and mishandling of the funds by the government was the main reason. The country halfway in at number 5 is Liberia and they have a GDP per capita of $1,161.20 US. Unfortunately, Liberia is often pointed to as an example of a failed state. The country has suffered and struggled a lot for a variety of reasons including an outbreak of Ebola in recent years as well as the rise of militant groups and warlords who are controlling resources. The country number 4 is Niger. Niger with a GDP per capita of $932 US. Niger is named after the Niger River and Niger has oil reserves but internal problems have led to major economic issues while Niger is the largest country in West Africa. Most of its territory is covered by the Sahara Desert which limits the economic activities which the country's population can engage in. Also the country is landlocked and poor in resources. Only three nations left. At number three we have the Democratic Republic. Republic of Congo with a GDP per capita of $930.50 USD. The Democratic Republic of Congo, which is different from the Republic of Congo, and it's really unfortunate for this country because it has been in the middle of all sorts of military and political issues for a long period of time. And this is why we have such a low GDP per capita. And one of the saddest things about this is that over the recent years, it has actually fallen. Then there's also the Central African Republic with a GDP per capita of $774.70 USD. The economy of Central African Republic is largely dependent on the exports of diamonds which brings in between 40 to 55 percent of the country's exports revenue. However, it's estimated that up to half of those diamonds are sold on the black market which denies the government of tax revenues as well as hardworking business people are getting completely ripped off. Now the number one most poor nation in the world is Burundi with a GDP per capita of $660.30 USD. Burundi tops this list and this another African nation with an overwhelming majority of its population depending on agriculture. According to the IMF data, over 80% of the country's population lives below the poverty line and problems with government corruption and coups have really crippled Burundi's ability to actually develop as a nation and as a result, poverty is widespread. All right, number 10 on our list today probably doesn't come as a surprise to you as North Korea is quite notorious for their reputation around the globe, especially when it comes to tourists visiting their country. I guess it's fair to say that whatever happens in North Korea stays in North Korea. Most of the public in the country have no idea what the outside world has to offer and truthfully, None of us really know what happens behind their borders unless we've been there. You might be surprised to find out that the only way to access North Korea is through a paid guided tour from China. And while you're on these tours, don't even think about taking photos, interacting with locals, or speaking ill of their leader. And definitely do not try entering North Korea unless you are booked with a tour. To give you an idea of what the tour alone might cost, most guided tours range from $500 to $2,500 US. And I'm sure that does not include the cost of your airline ticket and accommodation. So your desire to go there should be pretty intense if you're gonna go through all of that work. Next on our list, we have Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia's visa laws are a bit shocking, and this is because when you hear the stipulations on entering the country, you may feel as though they are stuck in the past. Despite the country being quite rich, full of modern cities, and grand shopping experiences, 
not just anyone can enter. Women traveling solo must have a sponsor upon entering the country, and this person needs to be responsible for that female for the entire duration of her trip. Couples who enter Saudi Arabia are expected to be married and provide proof of marriage via a legally certified marriage certificate. Without either of these, your visa would likely be denied. Oh, and we should also mention that if you have an Israel travel stamp anywhere on your passport, you could also have further trouble obtaining a visa. Now, if you don't fall into any of these categories that we mentioned just now, your visa process should hopefully process smoothly. Visas for Saudi Arabia are typically around 123 US dollars. Fancy a visit to Turkmenistan? As you can see, having an invitation letter from a citizen or travel agency of the country you intend to visit is quite a common thing for many of the countries on today's list. But Turkmenistan requires you to have an invitation letter even just to apply for a visa. And this does not secure the process as you could still be denied. Other than the required letter, Turkmenistan isn't overly difficult for travelers. Now, you'll just have to make sure to fill out an immigration card upon arrival and register with the state service within three days of arriving in the country. The cost of the Turkmenistan visa ranges between $35 to $50 USD. Not too bad. Next up, we have China. Now, China's visa process isn't as intense as North Korea, but still has its own unique challenges. Most passport holders can travel to China for a period of up to 72 hours without obtaining a visa. For example, if you're just doing a layover or popping in for a day or two, there's no problem there. Just keep in mind, they may ask you many questions to make sure you're telling the truth about where you're staying, but most of the time, they'll be clear. Now, if you plan to stay for longer, you'll need to book an appointment in your home country with an accredited travel agency that processes Chinese visas. You will need to prove where you're staying, what day you're flying in, and how long you will be in the country. If you plan to be in China for over 30 days, they'll also want to see a daily itinerary. Prices for the Chinese visa can vary. If you're coming from Canada, it will run you about $162, and coming from the States, it'll be closer to $242. Now, I actually experienced this application process myself as I visited some friends in China a few years ago. It is quite a lengthy process, so start early. Now, this next country is definitely on my list. Angola may or may not be on your list to travel to, mostly because the country is still recovering from years of civil war. Surprisingly, the capital city Luanda has been rated as one of the most expensive cities in the world to visit, and the visa process is not even close to being a smooth one. You'll need an invitation letter, proof of all your hotels, and you'll want to give yourself months to obtain the visa as many things could go wrong in the process. Also be mindful to stash away some cash as visas run for about $120 US dollars, and that's only citizens from 59 countries that can actually obtain the visa. But the visas also come with processing fees and other possible fees upon arrival. Now, it sounds like quite the challenge, but if your heart is set on Angola, then go for it. It's definitely going to be on my future travel list. All right, bringing us halfway through our list today, we have Pakistan. Now, Pakistan does not allow anyone to enter their country without an official invitation from a sponsor. You will be surprised to note, though, that it doesn't have to be someone you know necessarily. It could also be booked by a travel company with package offers. As long as your sponsor is able to write you a letter of invitation, explaining their relationship to you and the purpose for your visit, you both provide your IDs and you are able to submit a completed visa application, you should be all clear to visit. Tourist visas with a two-week processing time are about 160 US dollars. All right, and next we have beautiful Russia. Russia's visa process is ranked as one of the more expensive visas to obtain. Even if you come from a powerful nation with a strong passport, that will not help making it any easier. Now, it's no surprise that if you expect access to their country, they will want to know all about you. That includes your travel history in the last 10 years, they want to know what you intend to do in their country, and they ask you to pre-book all of your accommodation, so there's not much room to be flexible. And don't think about applying online, because that is a no-go. Each visa application comes with taking fingerprints, 
photos and a perfect application. One single mistake could cause a total mess and delay. So be sure to give yourself lots of time for your Russia visa to be processed and be ready to fork out the money. Coming from the US, visas run at about $160 and coming from Canada, they are approximately $112. Now our next country is Nigeria. It is a beautiful country with lots to explore, so the work that you'll put into getting a visa will most likely be worth it. In order to obtain a tourist visa, you'll need a letter of invitation from your host, a confirmed hotel reservation, a valid return airline ticket, evidence of funds to cover your stay in Nigeria, and proof of legal residency from your home country. Costs can range anywhere from $160 to $180 US. Coming in at number two, we have Bhutan. Bhutan is a country that comes with some unique challenges to get a visa. And it's not because it's overly rigorous, but because the people of Bhutan pride themselves on the quality of life in their country. Now, I had no idea, and maybe you don't either, but they are the first carbon negative country in the world, and they value their national happiness index above all else. So in order to visit Bhutan, you will have to book an all-inclusive package through a travel agent. These packages range from $200 to $300 US per day, and a visa on top of this is approximately $40. But you know what? That's not too bad considering it covers all of your expenses. Definitely seems worth it. And last on today's list, but certainly not least, we have Iran. Iran's visa process varies quite greatly depending on which country you're coming from. Iran has said they are trying to make their process more streamlined, but at this point, you should definitely check to make sure you know the requirements before flying. If you are from Armenia, Azerbaijan, Bolivia, Georgia, Malaysia, Syria, Turkey, or Venezuela, you are eligible for a free visa. Most travelers are eligible for a VOA or visa on arrival. Though it's important to note that this list does exclude Canada, the United Kingdom, the United States, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Colombia, India, Iraq, Jordan, Nepal, Pakistan, Somalia, and Sri Lanka. And any travelers who have visited Israel within the last six months will likely not be granted entry. On top of all of that, you will also need a visa code when you apply from a registered tour company. The Iran travel visa upon single entry is approximately $190 US.